Hey everybody, it's Mark T here. Now I realize I said in my last video that I was not going to be making any more reviews. Unfortunately, I was wrong, at least in that regard. The simple fact was, when I shot that video, I was very unsure about um, what I wanted to do. I do know that now, but what I also know is that reviews aren't some kind of soulless thing that everyone does. Uh, reviews are something that you know, allow you to express your passion upon that thing, that piece of media, be it a video game or a uh, cartoon show or er basically anything based around pop culture. And the fact of the matter is, the reason I started making reviews in the first place is because I love pop culture. Now that I've had a few days or about a week to think about it since my last video, I don't want to stop doing reviews because I like making reviews a lot. Um... But, you know, I, I just needed the real inspiration. And now things might change. Things might change back. I'm not sure. But what I do know is that I'm happy doing reviews right now. However, the one thing I have to state is that things are genuinely going to change on my channel. It's going to be reviews, sure. Um, but it's also going to be a lot of skits and classic stuff. Stuff that may take a much longer time to create or publish. But I'm going to do the best that I can to balance that out. Now, with that all being said, let's talk about Spider-Man Homecoming. Now, I walked into this movie. I didn't watch it in the theaters. Originally, I actually very much wanted to. Unfortunately, I did not watch it in the theaters. Um, I just watched it right now on my PC. And I loved it. And, at the same time, I did not. Now, don't get me wrong, I think the movie is still absolutely fantastic. It is honestly, in my opinion, probably the best first Spider-Man movie <clears throat> made. Um, at least, for the most part. Um, considering my favorite Spider-Man movie is the first one by Sam Raimi, uh, it's still really heavy shoes to fill, really. But they changed things up to the point where it sh it made things interesting. Um, so I'm going to go over these block by block, just so that it doesn't take super long. Now let's talk about the characters. Character-wise, I think Tom Holland is a fantastic Peter Parker and Spider-Man. I like the fact that just like in, instead of going the route of Amazing Spider-Man with having him like kind of like over the hip clothes, you see him with like kind of like nerdy sweaters and plaid. You know, I, I know clothes-wise it doesn't really make a huge difference, but it does show Peter's a uh, more nerdy side. Um, that and his good friend Ned, which is it's you know a million people have said it before that he's basically that one character from Miles Morales's uh, Ultimate Spider-Man run, which. It's it's pretty clear, um, but I still like him added in there. Don't get me wrong. I mean, for my Spider-Man costume in itself, you can tell I'm a big fan of Miles Morales' Spider-Man, and I would love to see him in a, a future movie. But overall, I think Ned was a good was a good you know adage. The fact of the matter is is that within all of the Sam Raimi movies and all of the Amazing Spider-Man movies. There's never really been a good side character for Peter to bounce ideas off with. Now, originally, when Ned finds out that Peter is Spider-Man, it gets to a point of not, like, annoying. At the same time, though, it's still really well done how his character is. He's Peter's best friend. Yes, he makes mistakes, as all friends do after you find out your best friend has a huge secret. But it just, it works. Um, let's move on to Tony Stark. Tony Stark, I did not like. Don't, don't get me wrong, I, I didn't hate him in this movie. In fact, to be honest, I thank God that his role was so cut like to, to like inches. Because the biggest worry I had when I, when I um, <clears throat> saw the first trailer was that Tony was going to be the big guy. You know, he, he was going to be the mentor character, which I'm perfectly fine with. Tony Stark being the mentor of Peter Parker is fine with me. What I do prefer, however, is seeing Peter Parker grow on his own. It's why I love the original comics and why I also very much like the Miles Morales comics. We see our main character grow into a strong individual that has to deal with problems and balance his life out. It's what makes Spider-Man interesting and it's what makes Spider-Man who he is. So having a mentor character that can basically give him a bunch of money anytime he needs it, it just kind of I felt like it was cheapening the 
you know, the general concept of Spider-Man. That aside, though, I think Tony did a good job. I'll also say that the trailers basically spoiled anything that Tony was a part of from... Well, I'm not going to say anything because of spoilers, but... Tony does basically everything he does in the trailers, and it basically has no point other than, like, the build-up near the end of the movie, which I'm also not going to spoil. And, to be honest, the movie... Or at least the writers of the story made the right choice, in my opinion, in the end. Then we go to the female friends, which are MJ and... Liz Allen, who I'll be I'll be straight up with you. This movie was so different. In fact, I'm gonna talk about Liz, MJ, and um, Flash all at the same time. Now, Liz is kind of a boring character. She's just there for the sake of a Pierce pining, and yet she really doesn't do much else until you know big plot drop in the <clears throat> the end quarter of the movie. And then we have MJ, who's just, in my opinion, it was fantastic. Zendaya does a fantastic job uh, as MJ, mainly because, A, she just, she's a completely different type of person than you'd expect MJ to be, and I tend to think that's what Homecoming was about. It's supposed to change things up. It's supposed to bring the classic aspect of Peter Parker and add a few changes that make it interesting to watch, instead of seeing the whole rehash thing over and over and over and over again. Um, so yeah, I really liked MJ, except she really wasn't given much to do. Any scene that I did see her in, though, I found hilarious with her drawings of people that are going through terrible shit in their lives, and I just, I found that hilarious to me. And then we're given Flash Thompson. Now, when I think of Flash Thompson, I think of the Flash Thompson I really like. Um, the best example I have is from Spectacular Spider-Man, where he is a bully, but at the same time, because of his general history with Peter as children, you know, he has well-meaning, you know, concepts. He's just not very good at expressing that, um, thing. This version, however, is just, I wouldn't even call him a bully. He is kind of like Reggie from the Archie comics. He is a jerk, and you wonder why you hang out with him, but he does not give you any justification to hate him other than a few rude words to Peter. And in my opinion, that's really kind of lame. Like, let's take let's take examples from um, <clears throat> Sam Raimi's Spider-Man, which was done very well. No, actually, not at all. Well, he's just a big muscle head that's there to show that, that he's dating MJ, and then after the high school graduation, he's completely gone. Who cares, you know? And then we have Amazing Spider-Man Flash, which, in my opinion, it does a fan. He does a good job in the aspect of well, what I've just stated from Spectacular Spider-Man, <coughs> Flash Thompson. He he's a bully outright. You can tell he's a bully to Peter and a lot of other people. However, once he you know once he sees that. Peter's uncle had died, you know, he gave him easy time, he apologized to him, he said he was sorry, and, that you know, you know, he was sorry for his, his uncle's passing, and that was all good, that was all we needed, I mean, Flash Thompson doesn't really need a big role, unless you're making a long line of movies as long as the comic books. Now, let's move on to one of the more interesting characters, and in my opinion, probably the character that steals the show beyond Tom Holland's Spider-Man, and that is Michael Keaton's <laughs> Michael Keaton's the Vulture, who is, uh, in a multitude of ways, I see him as both a good and bad character. We see him early in the movie. Sorry if this is spoiling anything for anyone who hasn't seen it. I apologize. But we see him as a genuinely well-meaning guy that is basically, from the scrape of his bootstraps, basically getting screwed over by high government people that want to take his job away. And while you might say... You know, throughout the movie, he clearly shows himself as more of a villain. I still really never see that. I see a person that cares about his family, that cares about his crew, and that may do illegal things, but really has never gone out of his way to kill people, which I find genuinely interesting. And even in the final clip scene from uh, from uh, the movie, we see a certain aspect of that shows him he's he's certainly not a very nice or good guy, but he has his own uh, beliefs and honor system, which I find very interesting. Moving on, let's go to the story. And I will say, from this point forward, there will be spoilers. Now, 
this is also a very unique story. I tend to think the writers of this movie saw what happened in Amazing and in Same Movie Spider-Man and was like, no, I don't want to rehash the same damn thing. We have seen the same thing for two freaking movies. And that is enough. Uncle Ben dies. The problem I have is that they never even mention it. Like, mention it in passing. Have Peter contemplate everything that's going on in his life, you know? Everything that led him down to this path. Maybe fairly early on in the movie, or even later in the movie, where he has to make a difficult decision. Like that, that scene where he walks into the, the prom, and you, like, you hear, like, the glorbed slow-motion sound from it. You know, it's Peter contemplating everything in his head. And then you can have a playback to when Uncle Ben is dying in the streets, and he says, Remember, with great power comes great responsibility. If you had that in there, it would be fantastic. But they didn't. And, you know, I, I just want some showing that, yes, this happened, and yes, this is the reason why Peter is. But to be honest, from the look of the movie, it's like they completely pull that out. They're just like, okay, you know what? Sc screw this. Peter doesn't have his suit when he took it back, and Peter's not a hero anymore. It's just dumb, in my opinion. Not to state that. Now, overall, the movie's... The movie thing was, it was interesting. Um, I do like the way that they balance the characters, and yet the fact that you know, there's not so much high school stuff, or they balance out the high school and the, the superhero stuff. It's it, basically, it feels like no other Spider Man movie I've ever seen before. Um, and one thing, especially, again, another spoiler alert, with the ending fight against the Vulture, it goes completely different. When I was watching it, I was so worried that this would be just like the end of Sam Raimi's um, Spider Man. We'd see, we'd see some accidental and yet intentional death of a character's father to lead them to hate Spider-Man. But no, they completely dissolve that. They're like, Peter's trying to save Michael Keaton. You know, they see it. The, the wings are about to explode. He doesn't realize it. They explode anyway, thankfully, in like the smallest explosion ever. And Peter saves his life, and everything's all good. Don't get me wrong, Zelens starts to leave the school and, and has to realize that her father has been basically a villain, and yet I still say he's not that bad. Really, I think that's all I had to say. Um, you know, I just watched it, I just had to get my whole nerdgasm out on there. But from the looks of it, I like it. And for one last thing to be spoiled, again, I'm, you know, I can't put in, like, annotations to say this as spoiled, and I'll, I'll probably put it in the description. One thing I have to make very clear, I liked what they did with Peter going to uh, the new uh, Avengers um, Tower thing. I loved how they did that. They showed Peter a brand new suit, they told him all his life was going to change, and while well, not to requote Tony Stark in that movie, someone does have to look out for the little guy, and that is what Spider-Man is essentially. He's small, he fights the smaller crimes, but he can also take down the big boys, just maybe not Doctor Doom or Galactus Big, <clears throat> and like that, I, I just really like. What I was kind of hoping for more so though was that like I was hoping it wasn't gonna get the other suit back, even though it's far less high tech. I was honestly hoping that Peter would just say, "You know what, Tony? Like I respect you. You're a cool guy, but I don't want the suit. I want to be my own person." And then he would either stick with his hoodie fleece suit until the next movie where he would make his own and, you know, create his own unique look, or, you know, actually, in fact, that's, that's basically all I was thinking. Anyway, that's pretty much all I have to say for now. Honestly, I like the movie, and I like the differences that they're putting in, and I'm looking forward to the sequel. Anyways, that's it for now, and uh, I'll see y'all later.